I'm here to present the solution to all our problems. <laughs> um, this is how we're going to get out of our problems. It's called secession. Yay. We're all going to secede, uh, and especially Western Australia. So Walter, Walter has enlightened us about the ways in which current approaches to environmental protection are, are wrong. He's helped us to see the error of our ways when it comes to roads and highways. Chris Brown has talked about the mismanagement of our water supply. And Brian Bedkobar has talked about free market solutions to health care. So together with the combined nerd power of all the speakers <laughs> and audience members, we have essentially solved all the problems facing the world today. And I'm confident that the government will immediately take on board our recommendations, and we can stop holding these conferences every year. But one of the things I wanted to focus on when I talk about reform, and I, I'm presenting secession as a, a reform, a political reform, is we want to have a reform that's not going to have negative unintended consequences. For example, Milton Friedman's negative income tax, which Roth, Rothbard has criticized, and which Henry Hazlitt has also criticized. It's, it's had as a reform, but it has negative unintended consequences. So we could argue for privatization, denationalization, desocialization. But why not argue for a reform that will instead put the right incentives in place? And even if you're a left-wing person, a right-wing person, or an up-down person, you're still going to have a reason to support secession. So we're going to have we're going to have an argument that can persuade people who aren't libertarians. So I'm going to be arguing that the one thing we can do today, and in, when we go back out in the communities and we try and spread the ideas we've learned here today, is we want to try and persuade people that world government is a bad idea. And <coughs> and that secession and nullification are good ideas. So the United Nations, the IMF, the World Bank, and the Australian government, they're big into world government. Uh, they like to run things on a global scale. They don't really like local communities. We used to have that back in the days, but you know that's sort of like a quaint notion that no one really talks about anymore, except for us, of course. And so what I'm trying to say is that we need to get back to local communities. We need to think about the advantages of those, the incentives especially, that are created by local communities. And we need to stop funding the world. As Ron Paul says, we, we, we give money to people for things which are totally inconsistent with other things which we claim to support. We give money to Israel and we give money to its enemies. We have no idea what we're doing. Our left foot doesn't know what our right foot's doing. So what we want to, what we want to try and figure out is how are we going to get to a situation where um, we can put the right incentives in place and we can stop funding the world. So as I've mentioned, it's, it's, these are ideas that can yield bipartisan support. But let's, get, let's start with some definitions. What is secession? We've got Walter Block here. Block says secession means that the right to stay put on one's own property and either to shift alliance to another political entity or to set up shop as a sovereign on one's account. Mises has talked about how secession how, but there are two different kinds of social cooperation. There's voluntary and there's coercive. The purpose of secession is to throw off the coercive hegemonic bonds that bind one individual or group to another larger whole and, to, and essentially to make, break free of the chains that, chains that bind one group from, to another. One way to bring about secession is to hold a simple majority vote. So the right of self-determination in regard to the question of membership in the state. Um, thus means whenever the inhabitants of a particular territory, whether it be a single village, a whole district, or a series of adjacent districts, make it known by a freely conducted plebiscite that they no longer wish to be remain united to the state, to which they remain, uh, essentially, their wishes are to be complied with. This is the only feasible and effective way of preventing revolutions and civil and international wars. A nation, therefore, has no right to say to a province, you belong to me, I want to take you. A province consists of its inhabitants, 
If anybody has a right to be heard in this case, it is these inhabitants. Mises took the idea. A lot of people say Mises was an anarchist. I disagree with that. Maybe he wasn't a full-blown Walter Block anarchist, but you know, he's, he, he wrote about how he, if it was technically possible, you could take secession down to the individual level. So maybe he didn't think it was technically possible, but in principle he supported the idea. Now the other thing we can talk about when we're trying to promote a reform, a political reform that could yield bipartisan support is nullification. So this is a diagram that sort of says what nullification could look like. So we have the federal government telling us what to do, but then we have the states uh, essentially protecting us from the federal government's depredations. And this is actually the way that a lot of constitutions, federal constitutions are structured. They're supposed to be about the, the states as independent sovereign units, and then the federal government is supposed to play a minor part. But historically, it's just become the opposite of that. The federal governments have grown to ridiculously large sizes, and they've taken over some of the state's powers, as we know here in Australia. But what's the legal basis for secession? We can, we can trace it back to the Declaration of Independence. Uh, that essentially was about seceding from the British um, and forming an independent American nation. But for some reason, we've, we've been taught to glorify Lincoln. Here, he's sitting here in the Lincoln Memorial, essentially uh, as a king. He looks like a king. He's in his throne. Um, we've been taught to glorify people who are anti-secessionists and who are centralizers. In Australia, we've had our secession movement in WA. Maybe people from WA might know about this already. In the 1930s, we had a secession referendum, and it, nearly 70% of the population voted in favor of seceding. But the, the eventual outcome, unfortunately, was that we, we didn't end up seceding. We, we, instead, we went to the British, and we tried to get um, permission from them to secede. But that's not secession. That's sort of like secession is, as Mises said before, it's the majority vote in that area, because people who live in a particular area have the right to decide. So essentially, the legal basis for secession is deep uh, in the roots of Western civilization and the laws of the American Australian founding, founding fathers. And the starting, the starting point is, of course, the Declaration of Independence. The Constitution, the Australian Constitution, doesn't explicitly prohibit it, so it's not, um, it's not going to be a legal problem here either. And I've written more about that in the journal article, which is linked to this. Um, but why do we want to secede? We want to secede. Why does Western Australia, why should anybody secede? The benefits are economic competition. If you have a lot of different independent entities competing for residents, you're not going to have uh, the situation we have today where states can essentially do what they like to their citizens because they know it's hard to leave. So that's probably one of the main benefits. We also have the benefits of um, regulatory costs and other things from the center. Uh, the federal government puts a lot of taxes on the states and they take away money from the states and they uh, give back less and they, uh, the states have been raised tax revenue. So there's a lot of benefits. And in the sense that um, people here in Australia might think that we don't need to secede because everything's running around pretty smoothly. We're third in the world for economic freedom. Uh, we're fifth in the world for beer drinking. Do we really need to secede? Why, why does, what's the big deal? What Hans Hermann Hoppe has pointed out, though, is that secession is, and Rothbard has pointed this out as well, secession should be done on its own merits. It's, it doesn't have to do with, it's, it's, because it puts the right incentives in place and because it gives government a check uh, because you can move to another country, it's, it puts the right incentives in place and it lets people move whenever they uh, they essentially don't like the state they're living in, whereas the present system is much, much more regulated. So I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to go quickly into the practical steps that we can do as secessionists. And I'm assuming everyone here could be a secessionist. Number one, you can buy a membership to Liberty Australia. Number two, you can subscribe to the Capital.hk magazine. So what we're trying to do here is trying to create a movement in favor of secession 
spread this idea because it's a bipartisan idea. It's spread it, uh, and even if you don't agree with, even if people don't agree with the specifics of it, they're going to agree with that it sets right incentives in place. There's really, I can't see an argument against a session that makes sense. Maybe I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I feel like, you know, this is an idea that could yield bipartisan support, and we, we've got to spread it, and these are two ways, the practical steps, that we can do to spread it. So thanks for listening. Thanks, you're great. Rob. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just read a book, uh, or a booklet rather, put out by the Center for Independent Studies uh, by uh, Jeffrey Walker, who's a lawyer, and uh, it was about a federal system. And essentially what it's about is competing states uh, between which people have the right to move. In other words, they can vote with their feet. Uh, would that not be a better solution than just Western Australia seceding? I'm, I'm not in favor of just Western Australia seceding. It could be Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland. I think everyone should secede. Um, but if you have an independent political entity, then that's a much better protection than having just states under the federal government in, this, in the constitution that we have now. Well, you might get you, one of those states and might become a dictatorship. Yeah, that's right. So the, what, this, as as yeah. People, as long as the people could vote with their feet, they do, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So if we have a lot of multiple competing entities like they used to have in Europe back in the old days, um, we, we could have... It would be easier for people to leave and choose a different place to go to. Whereas now we've restricted in the number of countries we have. We've only got maybe 200 countries in the world. We might have thousands of countries. Do you know what I mean? So it would be much easier and much, uh, in terms of the benefits you're talking about earlier, economic competition, that would be much, much, greatly enhanced. So. Excellent. Um, I'm, I'm afraid we're going to have to move on, but could everybody thank uh, Secretary Ronald?